Well, the NFL Players Association reports out of 100,000 high school players who play football each year, only 215 make an NFL roster. That's just 0.2%. You don't have to remind Brandon Crawford of that statistic. Crawford knows his odds of turning pro are worse than his fellow draft prospects. But being just as athletic as a 22-year-old significantly helps his chances. Some simply stare at him. Others just turn their backs. But since day one, Brandon Crawford has believed in himself, regardless if he is older than most NFL prospects. This is about an athlete who has the skills, who moves very well, who is very strong, has a great work ethic, has a great mental approach, and has every, every much of a chance of, of getting a helmet as somebody who's right out of college. At 33, the Fort Wayne native is trying to become the oldest player ever drafted. Currently, former Florida State quarterback Chris Wanky holds that record. He was picked by the Carolina Panthers in 2001 when he was 28. However, what makes Crawford's story more interesting is his circuitous path to gain draft eligibility. Crawford attended Southside High School under the 21st Century Scholarship Program, which aids prospective college students with finances. Little did he know, accepting a ride in the wrong car would delay his dreams. They go around the block. Um, on the way there, they see some girls that they, you know, know around the corner, and um, they were like kind of joyriding. They went on the other side of the street on the wrong oncoming traffic, but wasn't no cars coming, but they were just on the wrong side, just like joyriding and next to the girls, talking to them through the window. So I'm in the back seat, and uh, I seen some lights coming on the, up the front, and there's a police car. The police turned on their lights, so. They got over in front of the car, and um, I thought the guy was going to, he turned on the side street, and I thought he was going to pull over, but he left. He kept driving, so the police was behind us, following us. I was like, why don't you just pull over? Stop. He was like, I can't. The car's stolen. I was like, wow. As a result, Crawford forfeited his scholarship and had to postpone his college plans. He instead joined his brother in an automotive factory, making Hummer and Jeep parts. Just me smelling those fumes, that wasn't good for me. So... I ended up telling my brother at break, I was like, um, I don't want this to be any bad bearing on you. you know, I know you helped me get the job, I said, but I'm not going to be able to do this the rest of my life. I know that. This is not what I want to do. I'm going to go ahead and uh, enlist in the military. And he was like, well, go ahead, you know, brother. More power to you. you know, I love you, and whatever decision you make, I'm behind you. So and that's what I did. Crawford joined the Marine Corps in 1999. There he worked in an office environment and did not play any sports. After receiving an honorary discharge in 2003, Crawford took a year off to get reacquainted with civilian life. After passing through the NCAA clearinghouse, thanks to military exemption, he decided to walk on at Ball State. The transition, it wasn't hard. The thing was learning the terminology, getting in a stance, a football stance the way they wanted me to, um, and the football, things of that nature. You know, all of the stuff that goes along with the pre-snap reads and, you know, um, what do they want me to look at, my visual key, my pressure key. Then Crawford, as the captain, slams Harnish to the turf. It really didn't take Crawford too long to get readjusted to the gridiron. On the defensive line, he emerged from fourth string into a three-year starter. In his sophomore year, Crawford led the Cardinals in tackles for loss and sacks. The following two seasons, he received all Mid-American Conference second team honors. He wasn't done playing football just yet. After graduating in May with a degree in criminal justice, Crawford began his training at the St. Vincent Sports Performance Center in Indianapolis. Instead of the original eight-week training program that normal players endure before the NFL Combine or Pro Day, Crawford went through four weeks of strenuous training. You can tell um, his time that he spent in a in the Marines, he that's still it's instilled in him, and he really knows what hard work is. And, uh, but the thing is, he's humble about it, and he goes about his business in a very humble way, but he does push himself. You tell him his set, you tell him you know what reps he has, and he goes after it. Crawford did not receive an invitation to the Combine, so he had to justify his talent at Ball State's Pro Day in early March. When he finished the speed and strength test, one NFL representative commented on his potential. Well, I think there's going to be somebody probably give them a chance. I think a lot of these kids may get a chance, you know, with 32 teams. And, you know, we're all going to take 80 guys to camp. So, you know, I think there's a you know, good chance of that. And if I didn't know what his age was, I probably I couldn't have told you that he's older than most of these kids. 
The NFL Players Association says the average career lasts three and a half years. Even at 33, Crawford insists his 6'4", 270-pound frame allows him to play a variety of positions. Defensive player, if it's special teams, per se, wherever. I mean, you just look at my film and, you know, watch how I play the game and, you know, the effort and intensity that I give. I mean, I believe I can play at a high intensity for a long time, so... Um, wherever they think that would be best fit for that team and to be able to help that team out is fine with me. Crawford is not one for cliches, but he admits his age is nothing but a number. Come draft weekend, though, he'll be focusing on the numbers more than he's ever had in his life. Draft order, round position, time remaining. This time, the numbers matter. Reporting for the Weekly Special, I'm Dave Leno. Crawford says he will be watching the draft at home with his family and friends. If he does not get selected, there is always undrafted free agency. His agent would then gauge team's interest, but in the end, Crawford decides what club he wants to play for. The NFL draft is seven rounds long and will take place on April 22nd through the 24th.